Well, quite frankly, I'm disappointed, Jack. Are you, sir? You ignored the other leads. There were no other leads. Well, you should have chased some up then, instead of putting your faith in some ridiculous coincidence. Tell me again, how did Debbie McAllister meet that suspect? He was the employer of one of the witnesses, Bob. The kid in the off license, Matty Fletcher. He worked in Merrick's garage. You met Merrick by chance? Yes. That's when I saw the stuff in the garage. Stuff? Let yourself get led astray by a DS with her back against the wall and an axe to grind. What sort of comfortable position? And I don't think flippancy is very useful right now, is it? Well, I disagree with your assessment, sir. It seems to me that Merrick was a reasonable suspect. Who just fell into your lap? Well, it happens. Don't know we got the wrong man. That happens too. You saw this stuff when you were at the garage with Duncan? Yes, Gov. Did you tell him about it? Well, at the time, I didn't think it was important. It was important enough to bring Merrick in for questioning. Oh, well, that was late. Start working with your colleagues, Debbie, not against them. And that's not just a friendly piece of advice. Shows lack of judgment, Jack. Poor leadership skills. Stick to collating evidence on this one. Leave the rest of it to Alex and me. No point in me objecting, I suppose. No. God. Oh. Hi. Well, let's see it then. It's a joke, isn't it? No. Oh. That's oh, not so bad. A bit like my job. Is it true you could have been killed, Jack? You could kill crossing a road, love. That reporter told me you were nearly shot. Is that true? Yeah, I suppose it is, yeah. Oh, Jack. Well, on the plus side, almost being shot is probably the highlight of my day. It's all downhill from that on. Chandler put me in charge of a desk. Is that so bad? It's humiliating. Well, maybe it's for the best. What do you mean? In three months' time, you could be out of the Met. In four months, we'll be sunning ourselves on Bondi Beach. I'd hate anything to happen to you before then. Hi, I'm looking for Mr. Tutton. Oh, yeah. Second on the right. Lovely. Thank you. Mr. Tutton? Yes? Detective Sergeant McAllister. I've come to ask you a couple of questions about the incident you were involved in earlier. I've already spoken to the police. Yes, I know that. And to the press. Really? Who was that? Some young woman. Well, I've only got one question to ask you, and then I'll leave you in peace. Do you know a man named Alan Merrick? Who did you say? Merrick. Alan Merrick. No, I'm sorry, I don't. He's got a garage in Wyman Street, just off Canley Fields? No, I don't know. Oh, well, maybe you've taken your car there to be repaired. Look, I've told you, Miss McAllister, I don't know anyone called Alan Merrick. I may be in shock. I may have been pumped full of Valium, but I'm not senile. It's a tremendous happiness, you know, everything you do with plants. Something that always brings you happiness. Well, there first start in August. Could have been sooner, but you know, I said we were going to Australia, so it would only be better if I started when I got back. It's given me 24 hours to think about it. I said I didn't need to. But Tommy knows what a big decision it is leaving the job, you know. This was going to be a great penalty until I did. I am so glad. In a sense, these are sex crimes. In the gunman's mind, normal sexuality has become confused with the desire to dominate, which is why he's enacting fantasies of control and humiliation. Fantasies he'll have played out in his head many times. So why pick these particular victims? People who have pissed him off in some way. It's possible, but the victimology is inconclusive. You may simply have picked them because they were convenient targets. This is all very interesting, Doctor, but can you tell us anything that will help us actually catch him? Specifics, not just... Psychological claptrap. Okay. The man you're looking for is in his early to mid-twenties, white, average or slightly below average intelligence, maybe married,
could have children. He lives somewhere inside this triangle. He is or he has recently been in the armed forces. He was a private and he left the army because he believed he was being passed over for promotion. He sees himself as a leader of men. Alternatively, he may have been discharged, probably for an offence involving firearms. Could he be a deserter? Good point, Tom. That's also likely. I believe that at some point in his military career, our man suffered psychological trauma uh, in Northern Ireland, the Balkans perhaps. This is at the root of his current problems. So this happened recently? Not necessarily. It could have happened years ago and never been properly treated. OK, so if we don't catch him, is he liable to offend again? Yes. And it'll get worse. His self-control will slip. His grip on reality will loosen. It's just a matter of time before he shoots someone. Thanks, Alex. Jack! You were uh, coming to the briefing? What briefing's that, sir? Dr Pittman's compiled an offender profile. It's good, it's detailed. I'm giving it to the troops. Right. Well, you should be there. What, so I can stand on the sidelines and watch you and Alex do what I should be doing? I think I'll give that one a miss, sir. OK. Well, well, well. What's the press doing here? Same as the police, looking for Alan Merrick. I thought my governor told you to forget Merrick. So he did. But Merrick's the gunman. I really hope you don't put that in your newspaper. I spoke to the old guy who almost got shot last night. The same man attacked him as attacked me, Alan Merrick. I don't think so. His war hero father died three days ago, just before the gunman first put in an appearance. You didn't know that, did you? Here's something you obviously don't know. When Tutton was attacked, Merrick was in custody. You're making that up to put me off. I wish I was. So why are you here? Tying up loose ends. Goodbye, Miss Roper. This is Meadows. Gov? Are you busy? Yeah, I am, as it happens. What can I do for you? Really? Excellent, thank you. Bye. Gov. Jason Starr. He's a private in the Queen's Rifles. He went AWOL last Thursday after being put in a charge for assaulting an officer and misuse of firearms. A gun that he should have returned to the armoury is still missing. And he was seeing an army psychiatrist. Did they say why? Post-traumatic stress, they wouldn't give details on the phone. They're sending a red cat round. And stars a local then? His son held born and bred, but he's got a girlfriend, Anna Ritchie, and a wee baby son, who all live on the Lapmead estate. This is great, Bernie. Thanks a lot. I owe you one. No problem. Good view, eh? Perfect. So, uh, which one's Richie's flat? That one there. Number 38. Seen any movement yet? Nothing yet, so much. Come in. Sergeant Hawkins, sir. Great. Thank you for arriving so quickly, Sergeant. Have you brought Jason Starr's psychiatric reports? Uh, sorry, this is Dr. David Pittman, clinical psychologist. He's advising us on the case. I've got the files here. Have you located stuff? Alex? Not yet, sir. But you've got men on the ground. And women. We'll warn them. Jason Starr is dangerous. The officer he assaulted is still in the infirmary. And his sidearm is unaccounted for. So he may well be armed. Right. We'd better get SO19 on standby. George, there's somebody moving around in there, but I can't tell if it's a man or a woman. 
Yeah, we're going to need another observation point out the back. Thing from where? Yeah, go ahead, Mickey. Stars around, Sarge. He's been sitting there the last two days by three different neighbours. They're quite sure? Yeah, they said they know him. Any idea where he is now? No, Sarge. Can't believe I'm doing this. Merrick's father died of cancer. Not only are you flogging a dead horse, you got me wielding a whip now. He was a war hero, and we know Merrick's into guns and soldiers. That's all very well, Debbie. But what about last night? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Hello? Not now, Garf. I'm busy. I'm following up a lead. Garf, please. It could be important. I'm with the DCI. I'll put him on. Mr. Cullen wants me to have to lark me now. Alex. Uh, no, no, she can't. Uh, not for a while, anyway. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll call you back, all right? Thanks, Gov. Mrs. Merrick. Are you the police? Detective Chief Inspector Meadows, Son Hill, and this is DS McAllister. It's about Alan, isn't it? Sir, we're going into the stairwell at the back. Should give us a clear view of the living room. Stop. Are you sure? It's coming along the walk we know. So. That's him. Hope he's not planning to drink all that booze on his own. <laughs> Are you going on holiday? What? Oh, oh yes, just for a few days. Well, you probably need to get away. Well, what do you mean? Well, nursing your husband through a terminal illness. You must need a break. Mrs. Merrick, what made you think we come here about Alan? Well, I don't know. I just thought that maybe... Something happened here, didn't it? Did you have a row with your son? Mrs. Merrick, if Alan's in trouble, we need to find him before he comes to any harm. It's all because of this. Soldiers, the army, the SAS. Alan had it right through his childhood. All his dad's stories about war and killing. The books, the magazines, the videos they used to watch together. Alan lapped it up. He wanted to be just like his dad. But he didn't have it in him. In the end, it, it made him a bit... Gone crazy. Yes. And it started with the other kids, too. Matty Fletcher. It wasn't right. So when Dougie died, I, I told Alan. I should have told him years ago. And he took it badly. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Merrick, I don't understand. What did you tell him? Well, that it was all lies. My Dougie was never in the SAS. He was in the Transport Corps. The Falklands? He never got further than Catterick. My husband, he, he liked pretending. Just like Alan. See? Yep, I can see them all. Happy families. Whereabouts? Well, so we've reserved this plane for SA-19. Someone's approaching the flat. Some woman. Oh no, Duncan, is that who I think it is? <laughs> Sheila Blige. Who? Sheila Bridge, sir. The friendly neighbourhood drug dealer making her house call. Alex, go ahead. I'm with Dr. Pittman, sir. He's just read Star's psychiatric report. Tom, you're dealing with a very dangerous and unstable young man. You're not serious. Tom, if Jason Starr gets hold of drink or drugs, then all bets are off. Yes, I'll tell him. He wants you down there right away. Sir, Sheila Bridge is leaving their flat. Stand by, the target's in play. It's taking forever. I got the warrant. Great. No one's there, Gov. So how are we going to get in there? I got these. There you're on, are they?
Right, she brings the star, what, half an ounce of herbal cannabis and ten amphetamines. Do you believe her? Yeah, purely because I impressed upon her the seriousness of the situation and what will happen to her if she lies and someone gets hurt. Did you say anything else? She didn't see a firearm, but then he's hardly likely to flash it about, is he? She reckoned that he was edgy, he'd been drinking, and he talked about settling old scores. Sounds encouraging. Yeah. He don't always go in. I'd rather wait until Star comes into play before we take him down. When he starts popping that speed, the wheels will come off this really quickly. Yeah, I know. It also blows any chance of a raid early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow? No way. I've got a psychopath in there who's trained to kill. He's also probably armed. He's holed up in a flat with a woman and a baby, and he's got a stash of booze and drugs. Succinctly put, sir. Yeah. We wrap this up as fast as we can. If she comes out with the kid, we snatch her, we question her. If she gives the right answers, we go in, and we go in hard. Word of caution, sir. Of course. Get a result here, no one gives a toss tomorrow. Just doing your job. If a woman and child get hurt, or worse, it could be a real career killer. Well, you better help me find more than guns and ammo magazines at Merrick's house. Yeah, I do, Dom. Yes, sir. Jack! I'm at the Lark Mead and the situation's going from bad to worse. I need you down here. Well, lives could be at risk, Jack, and no one else has got your experience or expertise. Good. How soon can you be here? Yeah, well, uh, I could be there in about 15 minutes, yeah. Deputy McAllister with you? Good. Okay, talk to Alex when you're in the car. He'll bring you up to speed. Uh-huh. Thanks, Jack. What about SL-19? Standing by. Far enough out of the way so as not to alarm the natives, but they can be on the plot in two minutes. So there's someone coming in. Star's girlfriend, Alex. Development's girl. Gotta go. Sing from Chandler. Get into position, Vic. I repeat, get into position. She's leaving home now. Sir, she's got the baby. She's coming down. Put SO19 on standby. Trojan 4-2 from DI Cullen. Stand by. Oscar 5 2 from DSC. Richie hasn't got the kid with her. Repeat. She hasn't got the baby with her, sir. She must have left him with Star. Oh, hell. Back off, Alex. Back off. Trojan 4 2. Stop, stop, stop. You're on the plot. the end of Merrick's Road in two minutes, Garth. So? So, let's go around there first, search his house, then we'll go to the lot move. I don't think so, Debbie. Well, come on, Garth. Ten minutes tops. Well, we've got a search warrant. Because by the time we get involved in all that palaver, it'll never happen. Chandler needs me there. I bet he does. What's that supposed to mean? Well, one minute he doesn't want you anywhere near his precious little operation. The next, when things get a bit iffy, he can't get you on board quick enough. 
I just wonder why, that's all. Merrick's is coming up on the left. Long time since I've done that. Well, there's less personal stuff here than in the garage. I'll look upstairs. Charles was fears. What's happening, Kate? It's bad news, sir. How the hell could she have a kid that we don't know about? Our information was about Star, sir. If the older child's not his. If we leave Richie alone, she'll take the kid back to the flat. Yeah. Which could leave us in a worse position than we were before. And if we pick her up, Star will know about it sooner or later. And he's still got the baby. Where the hell's Jack Meadows? He's not your domestic goddess, is he? Maybe he's got a lock-up or something somewhere. Yeah, or maybe we're barking up the wrong tree. No. It's locked. Looks like you're beginning to enjoy it now, Gov. Keep on a tail. Let us know when she heads for home. Any luck with the DCI, sir? No, I can't reach him. This one's real. I think quite a few of them are. Right. I better ring Chandler. You know, it's a pity. What is? I'd like to have seen his face. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna go upstairs. Can't get a signal down here. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, actually, I couldn't get through. Yeah, but I want you here, Jack. Sir, Richie's heading back to the estate. Now! Come on, Debbie. Let's go. He's kept records, Gov. He's recorded where all this stuff's come from. Debbie. I'm staying a bit longer, Gov. Okay, but be careful. I'll call you later. Mm -hmm. Richie's heading for the lift, Gov. She'll be home in a couple of minutes. Hang on, Alex. Are you telling me that all this is based on the say-so of that shrink? There's the Army's own psychiatric reports, too. No go. We haven't had time. It all blew up so quickly. 
If we're going to stop it, it's got to be nicer. sir. We've got to let her go back. It's the safest option. Forget that for now. Just tell me where to go. At the end of Clayton Street, turn left. Yeah, well, that's where I am now, and I should be able to see her. Okay, I've clocked Kate. Doug, what are you doing here? So where's Star's girlfriend? Well, there, with the little boy, getting into the lift. Duff? Just hang on a minute, Are you on a wrist Yeah. How do you know that? I'm DCI Meadows, Sun Hill. It's not a whole word of you. Don't worry about it. You're going off. You're not going to believe this, sir. What? He didn't say anything? Not that he's going to do this, sir. Mickey, what's Star doing now? Nothing, sir. Still drinking a smoke this spliff. Great. We could find him, sir. Who? Star? Mr. Meadows, sir. You won't be able to get a signal, Gov. Not while in the lift anyway. Just wait there. Okay. Now oh, you didn't know. He said he was on leave. Well, I could see he was on edge, but he's always like that the first couple of days. Jason hates the army, Mr. Meadows, and the army hates Jason. He should never have joined. So why did he? Read too many comics when he was a kid. Now, are you sure Jason hasn't got a gun? Of course I'm sure. I've told you, he hates guns. It's part of the problem. I think we better go. Oh, I think we should. Nothing bad's gonna happen, is it? No, no, don't worry. Come on. He's going with her. Jack, what the hell's going on? Look, yeah, everything's okay, sir. Just make sure everyone stays clear, particularly SO19. Yeah, look, I can't talk now. I don't believe this. <laughs> okay. Mommy, Yeah, okay. So how is it? That is it. I think he knows what's happening, though. Right, and you're going to your mates? Yeah, three doors down. Okay. Come on, you. Yeah, you go your mum. Come on. You red cap? No, I'm civilian police. Detective Chief Inspector Meadows. All right, yeah, right. We say farewell to the darkly looming pile. No, I don't think so. Are we gonna go? Yes. <clears throat> Am I in trouble? I'm afraid you are, Jason, yes. Oh, God. Anna's gonna cure me.
Yeah, all right, Jack, you got a result, but he could have been armed. But he wasn't. And he could have been dangerous. He wasn't that either. That's not what the psychiatric report said. Well, that's lucky I didn't read it then, sir. You know, if I were you, I'd trust your tame shrink less and your instincts more. He assaulted an officer, Jack. So I heard. But I wonder. There's a lot of bullying goes on in the army. I just hope he gets a fair hearing. Gav, nice man. Cheers. Great, Gav. Well done, Gav. You see, experience counts. Great stuff, yeah, yeah. Gav. Good call, so, Gav. Thanks, mate. Very impressive, Jack. We're lucky to have you on the team. <laughs> I've certainly learned something today, and I hope the rest of us have. Can you uh, give me a lift back to the station? Sure. Roper! Oh, God. You scared the life out of me. Tell me about it. How did you get in? You left the door open. Yeah? My God. Is this real? Leave it alone. Don't touch anything. Are you going to tell me what you found? I don't think so. Now, come on, you've got to get out of here. Who are you calling? I just want a few pictures. Don't even think about it. One picture of all this, yeah? I'll make it worth your while. Hi, it's Andrea. I'm at, uh, what's this address? Oh, push it. Uh, 121 Purchase Avenue. Get here now. It's urgent. Listen, we both know Merrick's the gunman. Do we? The question is, where is he? So where did he get all the guns from? Contacts he made online. Local villains like Billy Pitt. Even his father, probably. But Debbie found some records on Merrick's computer, so we'll find out. Looks like I owe her an apology as well, then. No apologies necessary. Hello? Meadows. This is Merrick. I've got your sergeant. Ow! <sighs> Sorry about this, Gov. Are you alone? Yeah, I am alone, but I can't talk because I'm driving. Yeah, I'm just going to pull over. Alan. Look, uh, yeah, we can talk, but uh, could you put me on to DS McAllister first? Just so I know that she's OK. Otherwise, there's no deal. And where you left me, Gov? But I've got company now. Not only him, Matthew Fletcher's here too. Shit! And believe it or not... Don't mention her. Not to mention Andrea Roper. Don't be a smart ass, OK? OK. Debbie? Alan, can you put DS McAllister back on? I just want to make sure she's OK. Me, my big mouth. <laughs> yeah. All right, Gov. I've got some demands, Mr. Meadows. No, 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 no. Not like this. I want you here. Now. Alone. You don't tell anyone. You don't bring anyone. Got that? Yeah. Yeah, OK, Alan. Yeah, I've got that. I'll be with you in 15 minutes. No, I won't talk to anybody else. Yeah, now, when I get there, what do you want me to do? Right, right, I'm on my way. Yeah, I can, uh, I can talk to you while I'm driving. Yeah, Alan? Alan? He's rung off. Can you get him back? What does he want? He'll tell us when we get there. Is Andrea Roper with him? Yeah. There's no answer. What's your assessment of the situation, Jack? Well, Merrick's unstable at the best of times. He's got a partner, two hostages, and a cellar full of guns. He might have food and drink as well, so uh, we're going to have to negotiate. We can't rush it. It's not going to be a quick and easy one. I want SO19 involved. No, no. Look, I want to keep Merrick's trust. 
And if armed police turn up... Look, it's for your safety and the safety of the hostages, Jack. Yeah, all right, but uh, as long as they're kept out of sight. The attack on the retired school teacher. Matty, right? It's a very smart move. I'm glad you approve. Your idea? Or did Matty act off his own bat? What do you think? Why Tutton? He seemed harmless enough to me. Ask Matty. Tutton was his choice. I'm asking you. Tutton made Matty's life hell for two years. He was his teacher at primary school. It's here, sir. Watch them. Yes, sir. If they try to talk to you, shoot one of them. Yes, sir! Alan. Yeah, you can see me. I'm alone. No, I haven't talked to anyone. Look, we're silly talking like this. Why don't I come closer to the house so we can talk properly? That's far enough. Alan, I want you to let Debbie McAllister and Andy Roper go. Take me instead. And that'll put out a good signal. You too. I thought you were alone. I am. I am. But whatever it is you're after, Alan, I won't be able to authorise it on my own. So sooner or later, other people are going to have to be involved. So that means you're going to have to be patient, Alan. It could take some time. And you're soon going to find that having two hostages is not twice as good as one. It's just double the hassle. On the other hand, two means I can always shoot one of them and have one left over. What sort of a signal will that send out, eh, Jack? You're not playing at soldiers now, you know. Hey, you kid, I'm talking to you. Your boss is barking. You do know that, don't you? Shut it. He's going to get us all killed, you included. <laughs> Don't see what's happened. Do it! All right, down there! No, I'm bloody not! No problem, sir. Everything's under control. Alan, so far nobody's really been hurt. But if this carries on... Ah, oh, you've done the course, haven't you? What course is that? Alan this, Alan that. All that bullshit about I can't authorise anything for myself. Uh, hostage negotiations for beginners, Jack. But you're forgetting one thing. I've been taught by the best, so it won't work on me. OK. So why don't you just tell me what you want? I want one thing. What? I want you to bring my mother here. Have you ever been paintballing, Matty? What? Are you going to shoot me for that? Come on. It was an innocent question. Have you ever been paintballing? You know what it is, though, right? Fun with guns? Not guns like that one. These guns don't actually hurt people. They fire these little balls. It's really good fun. I think you'd really like it. How do you know? You don't know me. No. Sorry. No offence. That's just playing at soldiers. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Matty. I suppose once you've got the feel of the real thing... You...
You knew Alan Merrick's dad, didn't you? I did. Did he tell you stories about the SAS? He did more than tell us stories. He showed us. Showed you what? What to do. How to strip a machine gun. Survival techniques. Silent killing. That was before he got sick. You and Alan? There are other kids sometimes. They weren't respectful though. They used to take the piss. Sergeant Merrick didn't like that. He was a sergeant. He was a hero. In the Falklands. He had medals. He used to wear them on his uniform. He was like a father to me. He was better than a father. And Alan, he's like my big brother. I'd do anything for them. Don't take this the wrong way, Matty. But there's something I've got to tell you about Sergeant Merrick. Okay, supposing I can get your mother here, what then? Then, I let these women go. And what else? Nothing else. I just want to talk to her, that's all. Well, if you just want to have a chat, isn't all this a bit drastic, Alan? I mean, why don't you just go and see her? I've tried. I went round there after we... Look, she's, she's hiding from me. She's running away. If I do ask your mother to come here, and that's all I can do, Alan, is ask. She's going to want to know why. I want to know why. I've told you. I'm not going to bring your mother here if you're going to hurt her. I just want to ask her why. She's telling lies about my dad. I want to know why she won't let him be buried in his uniform. You believe Sergeant Douglas Merrick was a hero, right? I just told you. Honourable, gallant... Yeah. Yeah, that's it. He tried to teach you to be a hero, too. So? So, is this heroic, Matty? Threatening two helpless women with a gun? Do you think Sergeant Merritt did this sort of thing when he served with the SAS in the Falklands? Don't know. If he had, I don't believe he would have won all those medals, do you? A real hero like Sergeant Merrick, he, he'd protect women. Poor, defenceless women. He wouldn't frighten them. Not bully them, Matty. He'd cut off his right hand before he did something like this. brave soldier who's just fought his very last battle. Shoot me if you want to for saying this, Matty, but I know if he could see you now, he'd be disgusted. He'd weep. have an Oscar. Well, if that's all you want, why can't you talk to her on the phone? No, 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 that's no good. What's the difference? No. I want to look her in the eye. So, start with the phone. Matty! Matty, what are you doing? Something doing, Matty, you come back! Dad would not like this. No! Hey. That's an order! Keep right. walking, Matty, keep walking. Later! Shoot! Jack! Jack! Come on, lad. 
Are you okay? I'm fine. Oh, the medics will be here. Yes, well done, Matty. Well done. Sergeant Merrick would have been proud of you. No, no, don't get Laura out of the meeting. No, just tell her that I'm okay. Yeah, in case she has anything to the contrary. Yeah, thanks. You know what Fletcher just said? It's only a flesh wound. Well, there's a lad who's been watching too many dodgy videos. Why the glum, Jack? It's a good result. One in hospital in one day. That's good now, is it? Well, at least those two are still walking around. It could have been a hell of a lot worse. Plus, Merrick's computer files will make interesting reading. Sir? we will be in a minute. Jack. You and I, start again. Clean slate, yeah? Sir? Buy a copy of the Gazette tomorrow, Gov. We'll make that several copies. Oh, yeah, why is that? GCI Meadows, Super Cop. And dramatic pictures of you saving Matty Fletcher. They know about the lark meat, too. Well, I didn't save Matty Fletcher. Well, it's journalism these days. It's an arm of the entertainment industry, isn't it? Yeah. How come you're so happy? You just narrowly escaped death. Must be the adrenaline, Gov. Plus the fact that I'm going to come out of this smelling of roses. Not as sweetly as you, though. But it's enough to be going on with.